Hello, everyone. This is Stanley, or Dream Sword, as you might know me. And we here at the BBS podcast are back to do our monthly Tales thing. And we have a, another little special thing. Last month, we had the honor of interviewing Dezel, or Chris Neosi, as you might know him. And today, we have someone else from Zestiria. Is this... it Frankie Muniz? Yes, yes, it's Frankie Muniz. Yep. Mm -hmm. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Who, who, as we all know, was the voice of Edna. But, but not. Nah, it's, it's actually uh, Kira Buckland, or as some other people might know her, Rena Chan. Hello. Yeah, there she is. Introduce yourself. So, hi, I play Edna in Tales of Zestiria. Um, if you are a fan of JRPGs, you might know me from a few other games. I'm Serafina in Disgaea 5. I'm Hiyoko Sayonji in Danganronpa 2. Um, Artemia in Bravely Default. Marie in Skullgirls. Um, <laughs> Shushu in Mugen Souls. All that kind of stuff. Heck yeah. Cool. So neat. I didn't even know you were Marie. Learn yes, I learn something new every day. day. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. So, yeah. All right. This is awesome. This will be our second Zestiria thing. So, we're happy you could join us. So, thank you very much. And, yeah, uh, thank you. And uh, just to warn everybody, as we do at the beginning of everything, there's probably going to be spoilers in this. So, if you have not completed Tales of Zestiria, then you, you, you should probably do that because it's a good game. So, you know. But, uh, yeah, so, let, let, let's get into this. Uh, who wants to go first? No, I'll, I'll go last. They usually go last. Okay, okay. Ryan, you go first. All right, sure. Uh, my first question I've asked, uh, this is a pretty uh, common question that I ask all the people we uh, interview, uh, but, um, Kira, obviously you know what the Tale series is since you've worked on it, but uh, my first question to you, ma'am, is, uh, uh, were you familiar with the Tale series before, uh, working on Zestiria, and if so, what, what's been sort of your experience with it? Yeah, um, I didn't have a lot of experience with the Tales series, to be honest. I played a little bit of Tales of Symphonia at friends' houses and stuff like that, um, but I obviously I knew a lot of people liked it, a lot of my friends played it, and I heard them talk about it, so it's like, oh, it would be really cool to be in a Tales game someday, and I actually did some extras for Tales of Zillia 2, but, you know, it was only like a few lines or just background characters, crowd scenes, that kind of stuff, so... I like I kind of half count that as being in a Tales game, and then when auditions went out for Zestiria, they had me read for Lila and Edna, and I remember like being oh I really hope I get Edna because <laughs> she was kind of like mean and sarcastic, and I really like playing those kind of characters. So I I thought I did pretty well on my audition for her, but y you know you never know because you have a whole bunch of people reading and they're all really good. So yeah. And then, lo and behold, you got and it. And then when they told me I got Edna, I was super, super excited. <laughs> yeah, I was looking on your resume, and you were Mint in Exilia 2, correct? Yeah, and I knew that um, she was like a cameo character from an earlier game. And right. I'm not sure where exactly, because I haven't been able to find any footage of her in Exilia 2, but I had seen pictures of the character from the earlier game, and I was like, oh, cool, because I, I remember even... I think I played her audition for her in a fan project many, many years ago when I first started doing this as a hobby. So that was really cool. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. My next question, uh, like you said, uh, Edna, she's a bit mean and sarcastic, and she made a lot of uh, jokes. And uh, with this being a Japanese game, obviously, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, liberties, maybe. Yeah, reinterpretation, maybe, or liberties. Um, uh, what And... Since Edna is very, uh, very heavy on the jokes, um, I was wondering, uh, what kind of liberties, if any, did you have to take, and were any of them liberties that you yourself like got to pick, like, or did the director say, you know, no, you have to do it this way, or what was that kind of thing like? See, I'm actually not sure what the original jokes were in Japanese because the script was, obviously, when it comes to us, it's already localized and translated and everything, so it's you know, whatever they have in there. We actually didn't get to hear the Japanese lines. Um, it really depends on the game. Certain games you get to hear the preview of the line in Japanese before you do each one. For Tales, we didn't, I think, mainly because there's just so much dialogue in the game that it would 
add a lot of time and, and take a really long time. I mean, obviously we got to, before we started recording at all, we got to hear a little bit of how they sounded in Japanese. And then when we did the timed lines, like the stuff that has to be matched to picture, then we got to hear the Japanese for that. But, you know, for stuff like that, it's like, I don't know what the original line was. Cool, cool. So uh, the script then, uh, you didn't, were there, were there any lines that you looked at that were like, oh, I think it might work better this way, or was there anything you had could do with that, or was it, did you just do the script as is? Um, just as is, for the most part. I mean, once in a while, you'll be reading a line, and then the director will say, oh, maybe we'll change this word to make it sound more natural, or this or that. But, I mean, for the most part, things are pretty strict. Um, like, when the script is translated and localized it goes through a lot of people in most cases and everything has to be approved and stuff like that so you can't really just like make things up or or do this or that i mean sometimes you can record an alt but for the most part everything is as written cool cool um now for my next question uh, as we've said uh, you were also a uh, rena chine you you just talked about possibly doing a uh, meant for an old fan project so uh and i remember you were in a lot of uh, Newground videos as well. So I'm wondering, mm-hmm. this next question is, um, how different is it um, doing a big project like Zestiria or even like a different project um, versus doing something like for Newgrounds or even doing any other sort of like online sort of home studio-esque kind of project? Oh, well, there's a few pretty obvious differences. Um you get paid for, for you know, actual <laughs> games you do, which is nice. Right. That's a nice bonus because I did stuff for free on the internet for many years while trying to sort of, you know, get experience and practice and stuff. Um, the other thing is when I would do things for Newgrounds, obviously I just record at home for my computer, for my, like, my little setup and stuff. But for a big game like Tales of Zestiria or Disgaea or pretty much anything, you go physically into the studio because they want to direct you live in person. They want to have the client there um, and they want everybody's quality to be the same. Cause obviously, you know, that's one of the downfalls you see in fan projects where everybody's recording from home is everybody's quality is kind of different and it doesn't sound cohesive. Like the characters are all talking to each other. So obviously they just, they want everyone to record in studio. And I know a few of the cast members live out in Texas and they do a lot of stuff for Funimation, but they actually flew out to LA to record it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, cool. sorry to break in here, but uh, sure. this kind of leads into something now that I'm wondering about. Uh, I saw on your Facebook, you liked a uh, casting call for a JoJo's thing recently. And, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, seeing now that Jolene is your avatar, so are you a JoJo's fan? I am a huge JoJo fan. I have been for the past three years or so. I'm surprisingly running a panel for it at this year's Anime Expo, which oh, I'm nice. really excited about because I wanted to get it last year, but they didn't approve it. And then, you know, it, it happened. Um, I cosplay Jolene. I have a tattoo of the Joestar birthmark. I have helped run some different JoJo events and gatherings and done the panel at smaller cons and stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty obsessed. (laughs) (laughs) So then let's hope then you get to voice Jolene if they ever do an anime for part six then, huh? Oh, I hope so. Like a lot of my friends even just have that as a running joke. They're like, they should just give it to you. I mean, you clearly like (laughs) really, you basically are this character, except Jolene is way more badass than me. I'm like, there's no way that I could light myself on fire or even survive (laughs) prison or eat food with bugs crawling all over. You're telling me you don't have a stand? (laughs) You know, a lot of JoJo make their own stands like oh this would be my stand if I had one and stuff like that so of course I've done that <laughs> <laughs> awesome so, awesome just for posterity you have read the manga absolutely yeah. I'm all caught up and that's out there <laughs> so before any smart Alex out there just like just read the manga you know there you go <laughs> read the mango <laughs> yes read the mango she's already done it there's actually a a fan art someone did of Rohan using Heaven's Door to open up an actual mango. <laughs> <laughs> and it just says, read the mango. <laughs> nice. Nice. That's great. But yeah. Yeah, that uh, definitely sounds like there's a lot of uh, differences. I know I, I did a little bit 
of voice stuff as well. I actually retired. I only got paid for like a one thing. But uh, would you say, um, since we were talking about the major differences, would you say that a lot of um, uh, what's the word? Maybe fan dubbers or newbie voice actors. Do you think maybe they take the amount of work and uh, effort um, that it would need to be a professional voice actor for granted? Um, or what's what's your take on that? Um, sometimes yes, and I've been there myself because we all remember watching bad anime dubs in the earlier days. Now there's generally a lot higher standard that they're held to, but, um, you know, back when everything, the acting was really over-exaggerated and characters who were supposed to be in high school sounded 35 and, and stuff like that. And, you know, I know a lot of people will be like, oh, I could do so much better. I could easily dub anime. And, you know, it's, it's a lot harder than it sounds because I remember being like, oh, yeah, like I, you know, I've done stuff for fun on the Internet and with my friends. I could totally do ADR. And then I go in the booth and it's like really, really hard, especially because, you know, if you're doing fan projects and stuff, as long as it basically fits the mouths, it's generally OK. But um, you're doing something for an actual production. It's got to be exact. It's got to be perfect. And then you know, you're seeing this and you're having to try to read the line and you're seeing the line for the first time. You're having to act. You're having to match the picture. I mean, it's you're having to worry about all the technical stuff, too. I mean, that's another thing that I was going to mention is just the standards and the competition is so much higher, obviously, when you get into the industry and you're competing against people who have done this for decades. And, you know, there's no such thing as oh, you do an okay take and you move on. It's like, no, it's got to be perfect. If you trip over a word in the slightest or like don't enunciate something, you got to redo it. If the timing's off, you got to redo it. Like there's no, you know, you're really um, held to a very high standard, I would say. Right, right. It sounds like uh, the path to the voice actor is a very rocky road. Yeah, um, I actually, I got into a conversation with somebody on Facebook recently because they were saying oh I kind of want to be a voice actor so I can make some extra money and I was like dude any voice actor will tell you if that's the reason you want to go into it go into literally any other field you know it's like saying oh I want to make some extra money maybe I should learn to paint and be an artist maybe I should be a musician and try to make some extra you know it's, it's kind of something that you really have to do because you're passionate about because it's so hard to break into and I mean it's it's entirely possible obviously because there's plenty of people doing it to make a living out of it eventually but you know I still have a day job now um, a lot of other people do it's it's definitely not something you know sure if you can get on a western animation <laughs> TV show <laughs> or you know like a Pixar movie but that's not going to happen for people starting out unless they're really really lucky so it's you know a lot of people are like oh well I hear voice acting doesn't pay very well. I mean, it does. The hourly rates tend to be really good, but the problem is getting enough work to sustain yourself is really difficult because you can even be the lead in the show. Like I was the lead in a show recently, for example. Once you finish recording that show, what are you going to do? You know, that's only going to last right. you so long. So you always have to be constantly looking for work. Right, right, yeah. And Richard, if you're listening to this, you asked for a one rock pun, I gave you two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you caught that. Uh, I've said, uh, when asking if they take things for granted, I said, do oh. they take it for granted? So, so many people mispronounce that as that anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> that rocks. Oh. I was look. I spent the past, I spent like a day looking up rock puns because <laughs> someone asked, some, a friend of ours like, said, like, you know, I don't really want to ask her a question. I just want you to make a rock pun. I'm like, okay. And so I, I tried to find one and... Yeah. Well, it's a so good thing nobody was stoned too. when doing this podcast. As <laughs> far as we know. <laughs> right. Now, uh, my final question is, uh, it's rather serious. Um, it's, uh, I I did the same thing with uh, when we interviewed uh, Chris a while back. This is a very serious topic. Um, but uh, so uh, let's, a little bit of a role play. Let's say you're doing your Kira thing um, and you get hungry. And you decide, I want a sandwich. So uh, my question, my final question um, is, uh, what's your go-to type of uh, sandwich that you make? Or if you don't make it, where do you buy it? And like, you know, that kind of thing. Like as Edna, what kind of sandwich <laughs> does she eat? Sure, why not? Let, let's go that route. <laughs> either well, or, I'm... either 
Yeah. I'm trying to think because I remember there were all the cooking segments and we recorded all these things and she was just like rattling off the list of these ingredients and these recipes and stuff. But I don't remember specifically what they were. I mean, I really like curry. So if there was anything about curry in there, because I know in Disgaea we talked about curry and I was like, yes, I love Japanese curry. <laughs> all right, then. <laughs> cool. So... So that's the trick to make a curry sandwich and give it to you and you'll you'll be their best friend. Well, I don't know if a curry sandwich would be good, but they have like curry fried curry buns almost like um mm-hmm. like they're breaded and they have curry inside and they're fried on the outside. They're terrible for you, but they're so good. <laughs> right. Yeah, Sweet. that's all my uh that's all my questions. Thank you very much. Oh, um I'm totally down to answer anything else. I'm pretty yeah, open. Yeah, we got a yeah, all right, so full crowd. who wants to go oh, next? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, say you're up. Tom, you're up. Do it. Yep. Stand, don't be a baby. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry like... for the train in the background. <laughs> oh, don't worry, right. I can't even hear it. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, I've, I've had, had people I, I with can't. vacuums running. I've had to do so many retakes because I live right near an airport and train tracks, and it's like... Ooh. Uh, that are my cats running around in the background. I can sympathize. <laughs> Quick, tell us about your cats to stall while I pull up these questions. I'm sorry? <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> That's never a little too personal. Never mind. Okay, so my my I guess I have to go second now. So uh my first question is something I ask pretty much everybody. Uh do you make it a habit to, like, whenever you voice in something, like, watch it if it's a show or play it if it's a video game, or do you just kind of do whatever? Um, I'd like to. The problem is a lot of the games that I voice in are on PS4 and PS Vita, and I don't have either of those. I have a PS3, but it was a hand-me-down from a friend, and it doesn't read discs, so I have to get oh. digital copies of everything. Because, you know, like, definitely if I had a PS4, I would play at least the demos of everything, because... Games get really expensive, and we actually we don't get free copies as voice actors. I know a lot of people assume that that's a thing, but it's not. So we have to, you know, go and pay the full full price for it if we want it. Although, um, for one game I was in called Trails of Cold Steel, the client was really cool and gave me a box set of it. But I don't have a PS4, and maybe eventually I'll be able to record one or uh, afford one. Sorry, I can't even talk today. Um, <laughs> don't don't buy a PS4. Just put a camera in front of one. And just... Right. <laughs> you wouldn't download a PS4. <laughs> um, but I mean, the good thing is. Let's plays are so popular now that I can check out some scenes. Like, obviously, I watched some scenes of Tales of Zestiria. I got to play a little bit of it because my friend had it. And um, I was like, oh, let's, you know, he was partway through the game already. So he'd already gotten Edna in his party. And I was like, okay, I just want to use her. (laughs) Right. If you ever play again, free tip, spam air pressure. It's real good. But, uh, nice. <laughs> well, one of my favorite songs is called Under Pressure. So <laughs> Nice, nice. So, all right. So this next question, I realized I probably should have read it first, but uh, it comes from a friend of ours. His name is Kevin. Uh, his question basically was, how did you feel about the relationship between Edna and her brother? Um, I actually, I really liked doing those scenes because it was something where I got to be a little more emotional and have a little more range. Because one thing I love, I love playing characters who are kind of mean and and sarcastic or snobby. That's like my favorite archetype to play, which is cool because that's kind of what I get typecast as. But um, one of the things that I really like is when they have moments where they break that and they show emotional vulnerability. And I think... For the scenes where she's talking about her brother and she's just like really trying to keep it together and she can't. That was like, I love getting to act those kind of moments. And um, my friend who played most of the games so far was like, yeah, actually, that was my favorite scene that you did. Nice. I I, I can agree. It was very well done. Thank you. (laughs) No problem. Uh, Yeah, it was awesome. (laughs) All right, so let's see. Next one. Okay. This one also comes from uh, another friend who wishes to remain anonymous. Uh, <laughs> he he asks, 
Whenever you are voice acting, are there any ever moments where you relapse into different characters? Um, I wouldn't say different characters, but sometimes if I'm doing a certain voice type and then I'm doing something else, like for auditions when I have to switch kind of quickly because, you know, I'll do one audition and then, oh, I have another thing to record. Like just recently I was auditioning for a game and two of the different characters needed to have accents and the first one was British, so I did that and then I had to do Southern, but I was like still kind of like stuck in British, so I had to do it a few times because I kept slipping back into it. And then I was all in the Southern accent, and then I had to do a character who just had a regular American accent, and I kept going Southern. So, <laughs> yeah, especially with accents, I find because um, I'm not very good at accents. So a lot of times when I'm auditioning for a character with one, I have to like talk in it for a little bit and really, you know get into the flow of it because it's very hard i have friends who are so good they can just switch accents on the spot you can give them anything and they can do it from one sentence to the next and and i can't do that so it's like i have to prepare a little bit and then it can be hard to get out of it i see i see <laughs> yeah I, I i can see where that might cause some problems if they're like okay you need to be southern and then you just start speaking all prim and proper and you're like oh wait <laughs> no i mean the nice thing was this a lot of auditions we get to record from home these days so, and then they bring us in if we get the part so it's like no one else had to hear that i could just delete the file and start <laughs> over and take as long as i needed to do that no one will ever know <laughs> uh so all righty so i believe that was the only sent in questions i had let me see yeah that was it okay so now back to mine this is a cluster uh let's see now, this is another common one, but you, you kind of have to ask it in these terms of situations, right? You know? So, but mm -hmm. I, I'm going to put a little bit of a twist on it, too. Okay. So, part A is, do you have a favorite character of yours that you've done? But then the flip side is, was there ever a role you did and you know you don't have to be specific about it if you know it would like get you in trouble or something but was there like ever a role you did where you're just like oh oh my god why am i here i could be doing anything right now you know <laughs> like like that sort of thing um well to answer kind of the second part voice actors are always grateful to be working for the most part so even if it's a character that say i wouldn't normally connect with or is difficult then it's a really good challenge, you know, because it's like, mm. I, I can't just, as much as I'd be like, oh yeah, I'd be cool with always playing Mean Girl all the time. It's like, you know, doing something that's out of my comfort zone is how I'm going to grow as a performer, right? I mean, even my, my favorite artist ever, David Bowie, was quoted about that, saying like, you know, if you're not getting a little uncomfortable and pushing your boundaries, then you're not going to grow as a performer. And it's so true. Like, um, Recently, I was really excited. Um, it's obviously for something I can't talk about, so I can't give any details. But um, I played a character who was definitely more like um, like a tough, sort of like a soldier type of woman. And that was really cool for me because I don't normally get to play that kind of character. And it was hard because I'm used to going very big and over the top with my emotions. But, you know, obviously for a character who always has to be in control and commanding the other characters you can't go there with those levels so but you have to make it interesting so you know trying to i guess make the performance more subtle and nuanced is that's definitely an interesting skill and i know people who have the opposite problem they're like oh i have a hard time going big when i need to um i mean really the only time i would ever say i've had maybe bad experiences is once in a while you'll just get a character that is very obviously a miscast and this happens more with like independent projects and stuff like that where maybe they don't have access to a as big of casting database or you know who knows what the situation is but sometimes you're just like and it's so frustrating when you feel like you cannot give them what they want so you're like I'm, I'm trying I just you know I don't think that I'm like suited for this mm. you know and sometimes they recast in those situations like if it's really obvious that you know it's not a good fit and sometimes they'll try to put you on a different character or whatever even if it's a smaller one i mean that's that's very few and far between but um some of my favorite roles that i played uh honoka in dead or alive last round 
was one of my favorites because I'm a big fan of fighting games and my biggest dream ever since I started voice acting was to be a playable character in a fighting game. So even though not a lot of people play Dead or Alive last round, it was, and that was like the one that, you know, I had to buy this right away and play as my character because that was just the coolest thing ever. Yeah, I like Honoka too as well. Um, another one I have. Uh, oh, sorry. I, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I can tell you right now, I know a friend and he is obsessed with Last Round, like straight up <laughs> plays it every day. I kind of nice. wish he played Honoka now. Do you know if he plays in English or Japanese or? Um, he has the voices set to English. So if he ever okay. finds a Honoka, he will hear you. Nice. Because, <laughs> I mean, I sometimes meet people play DOA, but they usually play in Japanese. I'm like, oh, so you haven't heard my Honoka. <laughs> I actually sound really, really similar to the Japanese Honoka. Like, that's not, like, bragging or anything. It's just once in a while you'll get it where it's, like, really, really close, and that's cool. Well, then that's how you know they yeah. did good casting there, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. So there you go. Like, I was... Well, if it's just the efforts and no words, and I was looking up gameplay videos, sometimes I couldn't tell for a moment, which is kind of cool. Because <laughs> normally I can always tell. But, um, nice. I was going to say another character I had a lot of fun with was Hiyoko from Danganronpa 2 because I was a Danganronpa fan, and so when I got cast in the game, I was really excited. Nice. Yeah, a lot of Danganronpa 2 actors I saw were excited. Like, freaking, I remember when it was first announced, Johnny Young Bosch made, like, 10 hundred posts on his Facebook about it. <laughs> so. Yeah, it was a pretty popular series. Mm -hmm. And the third one's yeah. coming out soon. So. Yeah. But, uh, all right, so now for a more tales directed question, okay? So if you don't know, which I would imagine you do, but you might not, uh, Tales of Asteria is getting an anime soon. Yeah, people have been tweeting me about that. Um, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> That's what you're asking. Oh yeah, we we already know that. <laughs> don't worry. But um, I was basic question. I was just gonna ask if they did decide, hey, we should dub this, right? Would you be willing to come back as Edna and do the show? Oh, absolutely. I'd love to. Um, I mean, the other thing and a reason that I'm trying not to get my hopes up too much is because sometimes when the animation gets licensed by a different company, then they'll do it in a different place and have a different cast. Like um, the Danganronpa anime was a good example because they did the games over here. And then when they did the anime of the first game, Funimation got it. And so they had like their cast out in Texas. Yeah. Yeah, that happens. That that's happened with Tales already actually with uh Tales Yeah, of and I heard about that too. So <laughs> it's like as much as, you know, I know some people are like, "Oh, there's no way. They definitely keep the cast." It's like, "Well, I just don't want to, you know, get my hopes up too much cuz then if somebody else is playing Edna, I'd be like, oh, "Okay." Well, <laughs> that should be my role. Hopefully they'll no. do her justice. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to burn down your house in a week. <laughs> But I mean, a lot of the, like, Caitlin Glass is from Texas, who play, played Rose, and um, Ian Sinclair is from Texas, and, and a couple of the other cast members, I think. So, I don't know, I feel like they'd maybe make it work, <laughs> but it's hard to say. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, so, by the way, we don't know much either. We don't know if it's just going to be an adaptation or if it's going to be a sequel or what. We just know it exists and that it's airing soon, so... Yeah. Uh, let's see. So, next up, uh, actually, I think that's all mine. I, I think that's. I think that was it. I think. All right. So, all right. I, I guess it's Tom's turn then. I profusely apologize. I honestly don't know what to ask you. <laughs> um, it doesn't have to be related to voice acting or tales. You can ask me about. Food or music or anime or <laughs> yeah, like no, Oscar and JoJo's question. <laughs> um. Okay then. Sure. Uh, if other than Stone Ocean, if you had to pick a favorite uh, part of the manga, which would be your favorites? It's so hard, but I I would probably say Diamond is Unbreakable because there were so many great moments between the characters. Like, um, for those who have been following the anime adaptation. The episode that they just aired most recently had one of my favorite parts in part four, which is kind of like the 
the moment with old old Joseph and Joseph Scanny. He's just like, I wanted to look cool in front of you, son. And I'm like, ah! So it was really oh. neat seeing that animated. <laughs> oh, we'll <laughs> get along just fine. Part four also happens to be my favorite. I can nice. applaud that choice. Plus the fact that the main villain has my name and is modeled looks-wise after my favorite musician and has a cat stand that blows things up. I mean, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then he gets kink shamed to death. <laughs> well, he does. <laughs> but come on now, guys. Diamond is unbreakable and not Diamond is not crashed. Come on. <laughs> I have a license plate, a custom made license plate holder on my car that says Diamond is unbreakable. I actually randomly saw another JoJo fan on the road today and I was like waving my arms out the window like a crazy person. I'm like, JoJo! And then we actually <laughs> stopped and talked about it. <laughs> Isn't that a little dangerous? <laughs> well, I mean, we pulled over to where we could actually talk. <laughs> okay. Nah, nah, Ryo. They were just talking as they were driving in the middle of traffic, you know. I, I kind of wish I, I could I mean, if go it was drive. LA traffic, you know, <laughs> it's entirely doable. Mm -hmm. I was, was going to say, I kind of wish I could go done driving down the road and be stopped by Kara Buckland and just have a conversation. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so anything else spark your muse there, Tom, or is that all you could think of? Uh... Sorry, I'm not very good at this whole questions That's thing. That's okay. We're not judging. I'm not very good at answering quite. I mean, I've done enough interviews by now that I can hopefully not sound too stupid. I don't know, but then... You've been doing well, great. Nobody likes to listen yeah. to themselves talk. Even as a voice actor, nobody likes to hear themselves talk in interviews or whatever. Well, I assure you, I have completely out stupid you, so you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> that... That makes me wonder. Hmm. Uh, okay, so this is more of a general question, not a question pertaining to you, but if it has happened to you, then by all means. But I wonder, has there ever been a time where, like, a voice actor's, like, watching, like, a show they've been in, and then, like, maybe, I don't know, maybe they don't remember that they voiced that person, so then when they hear that character talk, they're just like, ew, who voiced that person? What the hell? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I think... Most people would probably remember if they saw the character. I mean, sometimes people do that as a joke. Like, ew, who voiced that douchebag? My friend said when he obviously it was like his character. <laughs> well, there you go. I'm glad plenty of artists are willing to make that a uh, joke. Uh, I actually just got home from one of my friend's concerts. Uh, he's in a metal band. And <laughs> one of the running jokes we like to do is, hey, who's this guy? And I hear that band sucks. Meanwhile, I'm wearing their t-shirt and headbanging to their songs. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. All right, yeah. so uh, I guess then uh, one person who's here but can't talk at the moment is a friend of ours named Sheena. So I don't know. Sheena, did you have any questions that you maybe want to like type out at all? Yeah, I was just going to say, oh, they can type. <laughs> yeah. Please do. As far as we know, she has fingers. <laughs> she has yeah, just watch out for Yoshikage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's only after pretty hands. Ooh, dang. <laughs> Give me your hands, because you're wonderful. <laughs> Terrible joke. I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> all right. So, all right, I guess Ryo, then. It's your time to shine, my man. Okay, if you'd be willing to suffer through a few questions with me. I always. <laughs> Ryo's the cynic of our group, if you haven't caught on. Yeah, All I'm right. awful. <laughs> um, well, you're familiar with JoJo's, and you've read the manga. What are your thoughts on Dwang? <laughs> so, okay, so when I first started reading Part 4, the entirety of the good translation wasn't out yet. And... <sighs> So I remember I was starting to read that, and then my friend who had showed me, like, where to read part three and stuff, I remember asking him, like, okay, this is a really weird translation, and why is, like, half of it in Chinese? And I, I'm pretty sure these names aren't correct. Like, I'm pretty sure this character is named Koichi, not Kuang Lai, whatever. Chunky. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to remember. And, um... <laughs> And he's like, ah, ha, 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 okay, read this one. But, you know, I saw, of course, the, what a beautiful duang, choo, choo, <laughs> how to say it, <laughs> with the Mona Lisa and stuff like that. But um, around when I was reading part four, 
the good translation was still being finished. So I got to read a lot of it, but then some parts I still had to read doing. So there would be randomly like the abage parts and, you know. Get a feeling so complicated. <laughs> I I'm glad the good translation actually kept it in a few of the solid doing jokes. <laughs> so do you find Dwayne funny? Or do yeah, you think absolutely. It's, it's got some of the greatest quotes. I mean, it would be a shame if that was the only way. Because I know for a long time for the older JoJo fans, that was the only way they could read part four in English. And they had to try to just, you know, piece it together. From It's kind of like the issue we're having now with part five, although not to the same extent, where it's like there's not a great translation out. I mean, it's certainly not doing, but it's, you know, people are like, oh, part five is boring because of, the way it's translated and stuff. And then people who get the good translations in other languages, like in Italian and stuff, they're like, oh, part five is amazing. And so, you know, but I mean, doing is so, it's got so many great quotes. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, now this is going to kind of bounce back to Zestiria for a moment. Okay. How did you get along with the cast and crew? And uh, Chris said everybody got along pretty well, but, I wanted, to, I wanted you to weigh in. Well, I mean, I've known Chris for like over a decade. Um, but actually, I didn't get to meet a lot of the cat. I mean, some of them I already knew um, from, you know, meeting them elsewhere and stuff. But for the most part, because everybody goes in to record individually, you don't necessarily even know who else is working on the game until the cast list gets released or the game is released. So, you oh, know, so it's, it's kind of like... Yeah. A little segregated. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, a bit of an odd one, but would you say you're anything like Edna? Um, definitely the puns. <laughs> I love making I love making Joe jokes, if anything. And my friends hate it, including Chris. Like sometimes we'll go to a coffee with him and um just a bunch of our other um, voice acting friends and stuff. Sergey's voice actor often comes with us too, and we all just like hang out and get coffee. And I make bad Joe jokes and just like <laughs> shut up. <laughs> well, uh, I'm kind of sorry to do this, but <laughs> since you mentioned JoJo, I'm only assuming you've seen this one before. But uh, feel free to watch that in your spare time; it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, going out to coffee with your friends is a gentleman's Joe job. <laughs> that was mine. Okay, Not if you're well. on the right road for stabbing. <laughs> that's my favorite line from <laughs> Okay. Dwayne. That's a Dwang, though. And that's a yeah. bootleg Dwang at that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Now, you, you were Artemia on Bravely Default. Mm-hmm. But now... I'm pretty sure it was still you in the second one, but I could not find an appropriate listing. Yeah, so, I reprised my character. Okay, confirmation. And since you were involved with part two, now, maybe I, I heard the voice acting coach was changed and a few characters sounded different. Is there any truth to that? Was there, like, an audio encoding difference? Um, like, what do you mean? Um, Adia in the second game... And mm -hmm. I'm going to use her as the example because she was perfectly clear in the first game. In the second game, it sounds like she has a very heavy lisp. Um, I, I don't know. It might be something to do with the way the files are compressed or, you know, sometimes for handheld games, it's like a space issue and they have to, maybe if there's more dialogue, they had to compress the files more heavily. I'm not sure. Yeah, that sounds like an audio compression thing. Yeah, it's an encoding thing. Okay. Okay. Um... Now, you've appeared in a number of games and shows. Are there any you would personally recommend? Oh, um, Play Dead or Alive, please. <laughs> um, Ryan's all over that. Danganronpa 2 is really good, but I would say play the first one first because the stories are very tied together, so you might be kind of lost if you just start with the one that I'm in. Concept um, discovered. Disgaea, um... From what I understand, you can play Disgaea 5 as, like, a standalone. You don't have to have played the earlier ones. Um, 
there's a really fun game I was in. It wasn't that well known, but it was called Mook and Souls. And I played the main character in it. And what was really cool is she had like these seven or eight different personalities she could transform into. And they were mostly voiced by different people in the Japanese version, but I got to voice all of them. So that was really fun. So you got to show off your crazy side, huh? Yep, I get to do that a lot. Like, the the bigger and crazier I get to go. Oh, I had so much fun with this one character that I always forget about because, like, nobody really played this game or talks about it. But um, it was... Oh, man, what's the game even called? The the character's name was Phyllis Izuyoi. What is... Let me look, look up what the game was actually called for a second because it's not really... Okay, The Awakened Fate Ultimatum. That was it. And... It was so much fun. I will link a little trailer of her because I just got to go crazy. It sounds good. Yeah, awesome. and it was just like, that's my favorite thing to do. I think I actually am familiar with that one. Uh, I'm kind of subscribed to the NIS America newsletter, so it tells me whenever a new game comes out. I saw that one. I thought it looked pretty cool. Unfortunately, I did not have the money at the time. <laughs> so, uh, if I ever decide to pick it up, I'll look forward to hearing you then. Yeah. And I'll put the uh, trailer you just linked in our uh, show notes for those who also want to watch along with us. Good. Good. I'm going to tweet. Actually, I'm going to tweet this video because like, more people need to know about <laughs> this character. Everyone play this game. Please I, play this game. I hadn't even heard of it. So, yeah, this needs some press. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That yeah. laugh, though, it was so fun. That and my laugh as Serafino was really fun. <laughs> All right. I. This one's kind of a write-in. And it's actually completely out of left field, but do you have a preferred class whenever you play games? Um, I mostly play fighting games, to be honest, so <laughs> I don't play a whole lot of RPGs. So, up in the air. Yeah, but I mean, I guess I like anything that's like kind of fast and close range sort of characters in any kind of game that I play, because I'm impatient and like to jump in there. <laughs> okay. So now the question is, what are some of your favorite fighting games? Uh, Guilty Gear is my favorite franchise ever. Nice. Excellent. I used to play competitive Street Fighter, but I kind of fell out of it because I just didn't want to keep putting the time in. Um, some of the King of Fighters games... Um, obviously, I started picking up Dead or Alive after voicing Hanukkah. Um, uh, what? Melty Blood. Um, I got to play a little bit of the like sequel spinoff thing for that, and I'd oh, love to play Melty more. Blood? Oh no, no, I I just mean that I like to play. I thought that's oh, oh, oh right, me. sorry. sorry. Yeah, that's sorry. Yeah, Melty Blood is only in Japanese, but um, yeah. random. Like I found this one a random game called Chaos Code at an arcade once, and it was really, really fun. And one of the characters made Dio references, so... Nice. <laughs> that was a cool surprise. Since you're a fan of Guilty Gear, that just kind of begs this question. How do you feel about Blaze Blue? Because a lot of old-school Guilty Gear fans are kind of... I don't know, I've heard some purists outrage. Um, I'm not a big fan, obviously. I mean, I gave it a try. I guess maybe if I gave it more of a try, I would feel differently. But the other thing, too, is they just keep releasing version after version after version. And I feel like for people who play that competitively, that would get kind of frustrating because you don't want to constantly be having to, like, when you get a character's, like, play style in your head and you learn the matchups and stuff and then things are kind of changed, it's... I mean, obviously, they'd be small changes in most cases, but it's just, like, even going to different Street Fighters, because I main Zangief, and they would make some changes to him, like, oh, um, this certain move would no longer knock down, or what have you, and it's, like, Completely that screws me up. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Because you learn how to play against certain characters. You already have to when they add new characters, and it's like, oh, you got to learn all these new matchups. But then, if your character plays differently, too, ugh. Yeah, so, okay, I, that's fair. I have a buddy who plays uh, Blaze Blue competitively, and one of his favorite running gags is prepare to relearn, relearn the game every six months. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. apparently, some of the Blaze Blue changes are really drastic. So. Yeah. 
I mean, Guilty Gear, it felt a little bit different going to Exard, but at least they wait a while in between games. And I don't know, I just, I really like the way the characters are designed. I really like all the classic rock references. I can appreciate that. Yeah, just like with JoJo. Actually, and even Soul Bad Guy makes a Jotaro reference, which is really neat. <laughs> uh, since you uh, mentioned it, I'm curious, uh, who do you like playing as or using in um, uh, Melty Blood? Um, I used Akiha. Um, usually Akiha Vermilion, who I actually cosplayed, <laughs> and nobody knew who it was. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Are, do you play the, because uh, I think they released it on Steam as well. Yeah, I have that, that for a bit. Yeah. Cool. Okay, um, last question. And it's really just because I threw it out there randomly earlier. Favorite mm-hmm. color. <laughs> but um I don't look good in pink hair, which kinda sucks because pink is my favorite color. So I would do like blues, purples, greens for a long time, and then now I finally have orange, which is actually really cool, but yeah, it's like people are like, if your favorite color is pink, why have, why do you never have pink hair? Like I used to, it didn't look good on me. Yeah, Sheena there, her favorite color is pink too, so she's cheering you. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I don't look good with pink hair either. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks for putting up with my nonsense, and I'll oh, turn nonsense. it over to you. I, I actually thought up a question while you were talking. If that's oh, all right. okay. What is it? Yeah. Um, going back to the Zysteria side of things a little bit. Okay, so there were, it, I don't maybe if you remember, there were a bunch of uh, DLC skits in the game, which yeah. corresponded to like different outfits and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, now one of those skits was uh, they had all of the characters acting like other Tales characters. Yeah. So now my question is, because uh, if I remember right, uh, and you guys can correct me on this if I'm wrong, Edna was impersonating Elise, I think? I think so, yeah. Uh, so were you familiar with her or her voice actress before, or did like they tell you, hey, uh, voice it like this or whatever? Um, I believe they played some references. Um, so they're like, you know, here's the character that you kind of have to talk like or act like. Um, I know, like, I remember doing some of the different DLC for the costumes and stuff, and I know there was a Blue Exorcist costume, and I was really excited about that because I voiced a character in Blue Exorcist, so it was kind of perfect. Oh, that would have been nice. (laughs) I wanted that costume really badly. Yeah. (laughs) But alas, licensing rights... And there was one where she has to act like an idol, and it was really funny because that's like totally opposite from Edna's personality <laughs> type. But you know, I play Love Live and stuff like that. So. Right, right. <laughs> and my character in Love Live is actually kind of like that too, where she's like, "Uh, do I really have to do this?" <laughs> uh, I have to be an idol today. Uh, <laughs> oh, my fluffy kitten is here joining in for the interview. Oh, adorable! Hi, fluffy kitten. <laughs> What's their name? He's he's about a year old now, so he's not really a kitten anymore, but he's the youngest of my cats, so I call him a kitten. His name's Jareth. Hola, Jareth. Como estas? What up? (laughs) uh, Ryan, quick, go get your cat. He doesn't... He's probably... Yeah, Asher's probably sleeping, so... (laughs) It's not yours, isn't it? Like your sister's? No, he's... He's... He's technically mine, I guess, because my mom and I are the ones who uh, found him. But oh well, uh, segue. Let's focus. Oh, well, there, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's purring. It's super cute. <laughs> he enjoys the company, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or the attention. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, cats are weird about attention. It's like if they want it, then you can give them attention, they'll expect it immediately, but if they don't want it, it's like, no, filthy human, how <laughs> dare you invade my presence. Right. <laughs> Sometimes you'll catch a claw to the face. <laughs> so this leads to another thing, then, actually. Uh, was there any particular... I mean, I know you said you really liked the stuff with her and her brother, Eisen, but, like, 
Outside of that, were there any particular like skits or cut or scenes or what have you that you really enjoyed doing as Edna that stood out to you? I liked all the little names that she calls Miklio. <laughs> she just kind of does it out of blue. And a couple times she calls Amiibo, I believe, which is like reminding me of those Amiibos from Nintendo. <laughs> right. <laughs> Easy. Poor oh, Miklio and then her stuff about the joke. Mormons. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. She's like, no, I, I, I really don't like him, but she obviously does. <laughs> <laughs> and then it right. turned out she had one on her umbrella the whole time. Mm hmm. Uh, so, all right, cool, cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of spent a little bit. Did you get, do you guys have anything more, or? I don't, um, I mean, we, I think we already touched on it a little bit. Um, I guess I could ask it just for the sake of getting uh, your perspective, Kira. Um, but, okay. uh, because uh, we talked about it a little bit uh, with uh, new voice actors or people trying to get into the business. Is there any sort of advice from your perspective that you would give to uh, any people trying to get into the business or even just any sort of creative field? Yeah, um, now my advice is always the same for this. So apologies to anyone who's like listened to interviews with me before or asked me this question in person or what have you. But um the thing that any voice actor will pretty much agree on is voice acting, the acting is the most important part because a lot of people think, oh, if I can do these funny voices or if I can do these impressions of certain existing characters and I'll be a good voice. I mean, maybe like, you know, there's always a cue, oh, I've got a nice voice or whatever. Okay, but you have to be able to make a believable character because... You know, it doesn't really matter what you can sound like. And you can train your voice to do different things, just like singers can train their voice. I used to not be able to voice young boys in the least when I first started doing this as a hobby. And now I get, you know, I get paid to voice young boys sometimes. So it's like, you know, it's you can do a lot of training with your voice and stuff. But if you don't have that foundation of being able to play different characters and all facets of a character, not just... You know, I was talking about this a little bit with Edna earlier, but for example, say you have a character who's kind of mean or what have you. It's it's like, okay, but that's not, people aren't one-dimensional, so your character shouldn't be either. And you have to be able to play them in all kinds of emotions and still be in character and be true to that character. So, um, yeah, I mean, definitely any kind of acting classes, if possible. And um, definitely get involved with online projects. There's so many opportunities out there now. And with certain things like indie games, some of them even pay. Like, maybe not very much, but it's something. Um, and projects like that that are original or, like, original animations you can actually put on your resume, which is really good when you're getting started. Um, and... Yeah, I think those are the two main pieces of advice that I always give. And you kind of have to be willing to have a lot of patience because, and I struggle with this too, <laughs> we all just want to start off at the top and we're like, well, I want to be doing this and this and these big things. And, you know, sometimes like, for example, with the Sailor Moon redub, I was like, oh, I want to be in this. I want to be in this. I want to audition for it. Like, it was like, it took me like five years to even get in with that studio. So it's like, sometimes you just have to, you know, I'm currently dealing with it now. It's like, there's one place that I would love to do voice work for, but I, I just can't seem to get on their radar no matter what I do. And sometimes you just have to be like, okay, it's not the time now. I just got to keep trying and doing my best. And eventually, you know, you'll get around, like, somebody will be like, hey, this person's good, you should use them. So, right, you, right. you are also a Sailor Moon fan, then, huh? Um, somewhat. I'm not, like, obsessed with it, like some people are, but I, it was really exciting getting to play my character, because she was a mean girl! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sheena, if you don't know, she's my met. There you go. But Sheena here is a huge Sailor Moon fan, which is why I had to ask so, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, all right, yeah. yeah. Anyone have anything else? Um, uh, no? I, I suppose I could throw something out there. Sure, do it. Do it. Kara, will you be my friend? 
<laughs> oh, don't be that forward. <laughs> um, I mean, that depends. Like, it's... <laughs> what do you have to offer, Tom? <laughs> if you give me coffee, then maybe. Um, or or I, if you um, if you want to talk about how hot David Bowie was, then I can share pictures all day of that. Um, or JoJo's. <laughs> He's well, got all I, those bases covered. Well, I assure you, if I ever meet up with you in real life, I will buy you a coffee, and we can talk about all the JoJo's you want. <laughs> there you go. Jeez. <laughs> So, all right, so I guess then to wrap us up a little bit here, uh, Kira, <clears throat> there's a thing we ask everyone okay. we have as a guest on here, uh, whether they be a YouTuber or a voice actor or what or what have you, right? Uh, now, in the character of Edna, would you be willing to do a little shout out for our podcast and if you can't think of anything to say we could like type something up for you to read like real fast if you wanted or yeah i'm i'm really not good at improvising stuff so <laughs> if it's possible if you can just write out something for me to say i will gladly say it all right i'll uh let me think what what's something edna would say if you tried to be sociable with her in a group setting hmm. uh oh i know hold on this might work if anyone else has a better idea let me know like a rock pun <laughs> I mean, that could also be something. See what you got. What are your favorite kind of rocks? <laughs> Mine are classic, <laughs> but some are progressive. <laughs> That's great. Let's see. He's typing... Honestly, I didn't know we were making rock puns today. I was aware that this was a stone-free podcast. <laughs> oh. oh. There. Does that work for everybody? The skit-style BBS podcast? Ugh, I bet they're all just members of Dum Dum Academy. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, I have been going to Doofus School for the past three years. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. That was awesome. You're welcome. Was Thank great. you for having me. <laughs> All right. So if anyone, if no one has a final thought, I guess this will be our close. So, okay. Uh, thank you very much for showing up. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. We, if, if the mood ever strikes you, we'd be happy to have you again for whatever. Yeah. Sure. Maybe if I get some cool role in the future or something. Right. It's... <laughs> Or maybe talk about the anime with us, maybe. Yeah, if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think yeah. we can afford a few coffees. <laughs> I don't know, man. My wallet's tight, all right. It's <laughs> just a prepaid card away. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, okay. So if that's that, then, um, again, thank you for joining us. And uh, that'll be our close. We hope everyone enjoyed listening. We certainly enjoyed having her. So uh, take care, I everyone. I too. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Nighty night. Bye-bye. Laters. <laughs>